Hi guys, we're here for our Bible in a Year Challenge reading for December 9th and 10th. So December 9th is going to be read from Amos 6 through 7, Proverbs 23, and Matthew chapter 7 and 8. So Amos chapter 6. How terrible it will be for you who lounge in luxury and think you are secure in Jerusalem and Samaria. You are famous and popular in Israel. You to whom... You to whom the people go for help. Go over to Calneh and see what happened there. Then go to the great city of Hamath and on down to the Philistine city of Gath. You are no better than they were. and Look at how they were destroyed. You push every thought of coming disaster away. But your actions only bring the day of judgment closer. How terrible it will be for you who sprawl on ivory beds, surrounded with luxury, eating the meat of tender lambs and choice calves. You sing idle songs to the sound of the harp, and you fancy yourselves to be great musicians as King David was. You drink wine by the bowlful, and you perfume yourselves with exotic fragrances, caring nothing at all that your nation... You perfume, your, you perfume yourself with exotic fragrances, caring nothing at all that your nation is going to ruin. Therefore, you will be the first to be led away as captives. Suddenly, all your rev revelry will end. Revelry. The sovereign Lord has sworn by his own name, and this is what he, the Lord God Almighty, says. I despise the pride and false glory of Israel, and I hate their beautiful homes. I will give this city and everything in it to their enemies. If there are ten men left in one house, they will all die. And when a close relative, one who is responsible for burning the dead, goes into the house to carry away a dead body, he will ask the last survivor, Is there anyone else with you? And the person will answer, No. Then he will say, Hush. Don't even whisper the name of the Lord. He might hear you. When the Lord gives the command, homes, both great and small, will be smashed to pieces. Can horses gallop over rocks? Can oxen be used to plow rocks? Stupid even to ask, but that's how stupid you are when you turn justice into poison and make bitter the sweet fruit of righteousness. And just as stupid is this bragging about your conquest of Lodabar, you boast, didn't we take Karnaim by our own strength and power? O oh, people of Israel, I am about to bring an enemy nation against you, says the Lord God Almighty. It will oppress you bitterly throughout your land, from Labo Hamath in the north to the, Are to the Areba Valley in the south. Okay, and then chapter 7. A vision of locusts. The sovereign Lord showed me a vision. I saw him preparing to send a vast swarm of locusts over the land. This was after the king's share had been harvested from the fields. And as the main crop was coming up, in my vision, the locusts ate everything in sight that was green. Then I said, O sovereign Lord, please forgive your people. Unless you relent, Israel, unless you relent, Israel will not survive, for we are only a small nation. So the Lord relented and did not fulfill the vision. I won't do it, he said. A vision of fire. Then the sovereign Lord showed me another vision. I saw him preparing to punish his people with a great fire. The fire had burned up the depths of the sea and was devouring the entire land. Then I said, O sovereign Lord, please don't do it. Unless you relent, Israel will not survive, for we are only a small nation. Then the Lord turned from, his, from this plan too. I won't do that either, says the sovereign Lord. A vision of a plumb line. Then he showed me another vision. I saw the Lord standing beside a wall that had been built using a plumb line. He was checking it with a plumb line to see if it was straight. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? I answered, a plumb line. And the Lord replied, I will test my people with this plumb line. I will no longer ignore all their sins. The pagan shrines of your ancestors and the temples of Israel will be destroyed, and I will bring the dynasty of King Jeroboam to a sudden end. Amos and, and um, Amazia, 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 Amaziah, Amos and Amaziah. But when Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, heard what Amos was saying, he rushed a message to King Jeroboam. Amos is hatching a plot against you right here on your very doorstep. What, is he, what he is saying is intolerable. It will lead to rebellion all across the land. He is saying Jeroboam will soon be killed and the people of Israel will be sent away into exile. Then Amaziah sent orders to Amos. Get out of here, you seer. Go on back to the land of Judah and do your preaching there. Don't bother us here in Bethel with your prophecies especially not here where the royal sanctuary is. But Amos replied, I'm not one of your professional prophets. I certainly never trained to be one. I'm just a shepherd and I take care of fig trees. But the Lord called me away from my flock and told me, go and prophesy to my people in Israel. Now then listen to this message from the Lord. You say don't prophesy against Israel. 
stop preaching against my people. But this is what the Lord says. Because you refuse to listen, your wife will become a prostitute in this city, and your sons and daughters will be killed. Your land will be divided up, and you yourself will die in a foreign land. And the people of Israel will certainly become captives in exile, far from their homeland. Okay, in Proverbs 23. When dining with a ruler, pay attention to what is put before you. If you are a big eater, put a knife to your throat and don't desire all the delicacies. Deception may be involved. Don't wear yourselves trying to get rich. Why waste your time? For riches can disappear as though they had the wings of a bird. Don't eat with people who are stingy. Don't desire their delicacies. Eat and drink, they say, but they don't mean it. They are always thinking about how much it costs. You will vomit up the delicious food they serve and you will have to take back your words of appreciation for their quote-unquote kindness. Don't waste your breath on fools, for they will despise the wisest advice. Don't steal the land of defenseless orphans by moving the ancient boundary markers, for their Redeemer is strong. He himself will bring their charges against you. Commit yourself to instruction. Attune your ears to hear words of knowledge. Don't fail to correct your children. They, they won't die if you spank them. Physical discipline may well save them from death. My child, how will I how I will rejoice if you become wise? Yes, my heart will thrill when you speak what is right and just. Don't envy sinners, but always continue to fear the Lord, for surely you have a future ahead of you. Your hopes will not be disappointed. My child, listen and be wise. Keep your heart on the right course. Do not carouse with drunkards and gluttons, for they are on their way to poverty. Too much sleep clothes a person with rags. Listen to your father who gave you life and don't despise your mother's experience when she is old. Get the truth and don't ever sell it. Also get wisdom, discipline, and discernment. The father of godly children has cause for joy. What a pleasure it is to have wise children. So give your parents joy. May she who gave you birth be happy. Oh, my son, give me your heart. May your eyes delight in my ways of wisdom. A prostitute is a deep pit. An adulterous woman is treacherous. She hides and waits like a robber looking for another victim who will be unfaithful to his wife. Who has anguish? Who has sorrow? Who is always fighting? Who is always complaining? Who has unnecessary bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? It is the one who spends long hours in the taverns trying out new drinks. Don't let the sparkle and smooth taste of wine deceive you. For in the end, it bites like a poisonous serpent. It stings like a viper. You will see hallucinations and you will say crazy things. You will stagger like a sailor tossed at sea, clinging to a swaying mast. And you will say, they hit me, but I didn't feel it. I didn't even know it when they beat me up. When will I when will I wake up so I can have another drink? Okay, in Matthew chapter 7. Hopefully you can hear me over my kids playing very loudly downstairs. Okay, Matthew chapter 7. Don't condemn others. Stop judging others and you will not be judged, for others will treat you as you treat them. Whatever measure you use in judging others will be used to measure how you are judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How could you think of saying, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see the past, when you can't see the past the log in your own eye? Oh my goodness. <sighs> why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. First, get rid of the log from your own eye. Then perhaps you'll see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Don't give what is holy to unholy people. Don't give pearls to swine. They will trample the pearls and turn and attack you. Effective prayer. Keep on asking and you will be given what you ask for. Keep on looking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. And if the door and the door is open to everyone who knocks. You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. If you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask him? The golden rule, do for others what you would like them to do for you. This is a summary of all that is taught in the laws and the prophets. The narrow gate, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose the easy way. But the gateway to life is small and the road is narrow and only a few ever find it. The tree and its fruit, beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really wolves that will tear you apart. 
You can detect them by the way they act, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit. You don't pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles. A healthy tree produces good fruit, and an unhealthy tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, the way to identify a tree or a person is by the kind of fruit that is produced. True disciples. Not all people who sound religious are really godly. They may refer to me as, quote, Lord, but they still won't enter the kingdom of heaven. The decisive issue is whether they obey my Father in heaven. On Judgment Day, many will tell me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I'll reply, I never knew you. Go away. The things you did were not author. The things you did were unauthorized. Building on a solid foundation. Anyone who listens to my teaching and obeys me is wise, like a person who built a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise, the winds beat, and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on rock. But anyone who hears my teaching and ignores it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will fall with a mighty crash. After Jesus finished speaking, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he taught as one who had real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious law. And chapter 8, Jesus heals a man with leprosy. Large crowds followed Jesus as he came down the mountainside. Suddenly a man with leprosy approached Jesus. He knelt before him, worshiping. Lord, the man said, if you want to, you can make me well again. Jesus touched him. I want to, he said. Be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. Then Jesus said to him, go right over to the priest and let him examine you. Don't talk to anyone along the way. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy, so everyone will have proof of your healing. Faith of the Roman officer. When Jesus arrived in Capernaum, a Roman officer came and pleaded with him, Lord, my young servant lies in bed, paralyzed and racked with pain. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. Then the officer said, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come into my home. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. I know because I am under the authority of my superior officers, and I have the authority over my soldiers. I only need to say go, and they go, or come, and they come. And if I say to my slaves, don't do this or that, they do it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to the crowd, he said, I tell you the truth. I haven't seen faith like this in all the land of Israel. And I tell you this, that many Gentiles will come from all over the world to sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the feast in the kingdom of heaven. But many Israelites, those for whom the kingdom was prepared, will be cast into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the Roman officer, Go on home. What you have believed has happened. And the young servant was healed that same hour. Jesus heals many people. When Jesus arrived at Peter's house, Peter's mother-in-law was in bed with a high fever. But when Jesus touched her hand, the fever left her. And she got up and prepared a meal for him. That evening, many demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. All the spirits fled when he commanded them to leave, and he healed all the sick. This fulfilled the word of the Lord through Isaiah, who said, He took our sicknesses and removed our diseases. The cost of following Jesus. When Jesus noticed how large the crowd was growing, he instructed his disciples to cross the other side of the lake. Then one of the teachers of religious law said to him, Teacher, I will follow you no matter where you go. But Jesus said, Foxes have dens to live in, and birds have nests, but I, the Son of Man, have no home of my own, not even a place to lay my head. Another of his disciples said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Follow me now. Let those who are spiritually dead care for their own dead. Jesus calms the storm. Then Jesus got into the boat and started across the lake with his disciples. Suddenly a terrible storm came up with waves breaking into the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went to him and woke him up, shouting, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. And Jesus answered, Why are you afraid? You have so little faith. Then he stood up and rebuked the wind and waves, and suddenly all was calm. The disciples just sat there in awe. Who is this? They asked themselves. Even the wind and waves obey him. Jesus heals two demon-possessed men. When Jesus arrived on the other side of the lake in the land of the Gadarenes, two men who were possessed by demons met him. They lived in a cemetery and were so dangerous that no one could go through that area. They began screaming at him, Why are you bothering us, son of God? You have no right to torture us before God's appointed time. A large herd of pigs was feeding in the distance, so the demons begged, If you cast us out, set us into that herd of pigs. All right, go, Jesus commanded them. And the demons came out of the men and entered the pigs, and the whole herd plunged down the steep hillside, into the lake and drowned in the water. The herdsmen fled to the nearby city, telling everyone what happened to the demon-possessed men. The entire town came out to meet Jesus, but they begged him to go away and leave them alone.
that is all for today's reading for December 10th. It says, reflect on God as King of Kings.